Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, join this webinar on event management. Uh, my name's Kevin Shaw, and again, thank you for taking the time uh, on your hectic day, your schedules to do this. Just to set the scene, the session itself will last no longer than an hour. Due to that fact, uh, I'd like everyone to be aware of how I intend to run the session with the right balance of content delivery from myself, also taking the time to handle any questions you may or may not have uh, throughout the session. And to that end, again, I'd like to set just a couple of ground rules, please. On the GoToWebinar, you will have noticed there are various options available for, for interaction throughout the session. These include things such as hand raising, uh, the question and chat facilities. Could I please ask you to use the question option if you do have any queries relating to the presentation content. Throughout the presentation, I will be taking a couple of opportunities to handle any questions you may have raised during the delivery. And at the end, of course, I will ask for any uh, further information requests or queries. At the end of the session, you will be, all attendees will be sent a white paper covering the topics we've been discussing here. Uh, on that note, should I get uh, a whole host of questions, bear in mind the timescales uh, we're operating within, and if I'm then able to uh, succinctly address the questions within that time period, then rest assured I will take the opportunity to respond to each of you individually via email with a uh, fully considered response. <clears throat> so let's carry on. Here's the agenda for the topics I'm going to be covering. Um, uh, welcome, introductions, just a few words to give you a little background about myself. And for those who don't know us, uh, the company I work for, FGI, so I'll give you a bit of background on our company as well. And uh, just to articulate the purpose of the webinar itself. And then I'm going to work through the ITIL definition of an event and the purpose of the event management process with a view to ask him, well, what does it actually mean? What does it really mean to us? Then I'm going to work throughout the life cycle stages themselves and begin to ask and understand where event management fits within the context of each of the life cycle stages, because it does tend to be considered purely at the operational level. This all culminates in something I've uh, called the big picture, and basically that's what it is, a big picture, illustrating how all of this pulls together to form event management right across the life cycle process. A brief summary, and as I've mentioned before, I'll handle any questions as and when they come up. My name's Kevin Shaw then, for your information. Um, I have worked in a number of industry sectors, uh, including steelworks, uh, airlines, uh, logistics for retail organizations, automotive organizations, technology organizations. Throughout my career I've had a wide range of uh, diverse roles geographically and uh, work related from uh, a computer operator through networks, uh, Unix, working as uh, a business relationship manager, uh, heading up teams to implement the ITIL processes, and in the past I have worked for other consultancy organizations as a service management consultant and indeed delivering training on ITIL, COBIT, PRINCE2, MOF, ISO 20000, a wide range, let's just say that. So I have worked on all this. FGI, if you haven't heard of us, well our company does specialize, I suppose, in business consultancy and learning solutions. Uh, we offer a wide range of cost-effective solutions, actually irrespective of the size of the undertaking. We have uh, dedicated resources, industry experts that can help you in any aspect of training and consultancy. And in particular on the training, I suppose, we try to give you an exceptional learning experience understanding the values, the needs of your business, and our consultants would work with you to make sure we can get an effective program for your organization to ensure that it meets the needs of your organization. So we do set ourselves apart from the, the rest, as it were, delivering services and training from our consultants on site at your premises or at dedicated training venues we've got up and down the country. 
the webinar itself, well, we need to understand what is meant by event management and particularly the importance of event management throughout the life cycle. As I've mentioned already, there tends to be a focus that is considered as part of uh, operations activities only. I said a question, has event management become the forgotten process? I do believe there is a perception that it just happens. And most importantly, I want to start to generate some thoughts, some consideration in your own minds as to how your organization could benefit from a fully comprehensive approach to event management across the life cycle rather than considering it as an end result of what we do, perhaps we should be understanding what is the end result the business is trying to achieve and how can event management help us to achieve that right from the outset of the service life cycle. Here's the definition from ITIL. So an event is defined as any state of change that has significance for the management of a configuration item or a service. It says we manage events through their life cycle by detecting them, making sense of them and determining the appropriate control action. I would ask, do we understand what an event is as supposed to be what denotes an event? You may or may not be aware that events are categorized into three levels, information, warning and exception. And they usually ask people about their uh, disk when they look at capacity. What denotes a, a warning threshold? What denotes an event threshold? And they usually give me a percentage. And I ask them, where does that percentage come from? Is 90% of 500 terabytes the same as 90% of 2 gigabytes? When they're setting these thresholds, typically at the uh, IT operational level, is there any thought, consideration given to uh, future business plans, growth plans? Are we trying to transform the business? Or even contraction? If I was to consider security, what denotes an information event? A user logging on, a user logging off, as opposed to what indicates an exception? When is this considered? At the operational level, or should it perhaps be designed in well up front and actually understanding what we mean by this? So to take it just one step further, there's the definition. We detect events, make sense of them, and determine the appropriate control action. What does this actually mean? Well, my take on it is basically we detect events, something happens. We evaluate them and say how serious it is. This is making sense of them. What denotes an information or one in an exception event? And then we need to uh, determine the appropriate control action. What do we need to do? So in essence, event management, there is uh, uh, a rather lengthy description there. Perhaps you can boil it back down to these three levels. And you will need to consider what denotes information one or exception events. Starting with strategy. <clears throat> Service strategy is really understanding why we're we doing something before we get into the how. We need to understand what the customer values, why should the customer buy these services from us, and we need to understand what are, what are the business requirements, what are they trying to achieve. This is what we're doing as part of strategy management for IT services. So is the strategy to uh, run the business, i.e. maintain the status quo, are we trying to grow the business, move into adjacent market spaces, are we trying to transform the business, go down a completely different route altogether. As part of strategy, we need to understand what are the critical success factors. Underpinning the critical success factors, we have the key performance indicators, CSFs and KPIs can be qualitative or quantitative by nature. So we may have a quality critical success factor. We want to be perceived as a world-class service provider. Uh, the KPI showing us how well we're working towards that may be an increase in customer satisfaction scores. Quantitative, as opposed to the quality one I've just mentioned, 
may be a classic one these days, we must reduce costs. And we're looking at average costs to resolve an incident, perhaps, as an example. It is event management. Given as the metrics that will feed into the key performance indicators, showing us how well we are working towards our critical success factors, it is event management that is providing tangible proof that the strategy is working. So, when we're understanding this, right from the outset, our critical success factors, it will be the role of business relationship management that has a key role to play here. They are really the face of the IT service provider to the customer and vice versa. It is the business relationship manager that will need to understand what is it that makes this a success, what denotes value to the customer and how are we going to manage, measure, report on operational activities in support of customer requirements. So perhaps the BRM should be understanding, yes, the CSFs, but start to articulate these things in terms that we can design for, build and test, and monitor in operations. Not to lose sight of the service portfolio as well here. The service portfolio is really an expression of a service provider's intent, how we're going to manage the resources and track the investment throughout the life cycle of the service. Now, if we're considering event management, we need to understand tools, perhaps, licenses, training requirements, the resources we're going to need, which may influence some of the decisions we make around the service portfolio as we go through the steps of define, analyze, approve, and charter chartering the resource, which in itself will have a linkage, I suppose, in strategy and design, financial management in strategy, because we need to fund these things, and we may even get involved with supplier management as part of design, because we will need to uh, assess or evaluate suppliers, understand um, what tools they can provide us with to ensure that the tools we're going to be using that will uh, be driven by event management are not constraining us and they provide us the information we need. The output from strategy is the service charter as part of service portfolio management. And within the service charter as well, we may produce the service model which describes the structure and the dynamics of the service, the interactions otherwise. And without event management, how are we able to monitor and measure this? So I'm just can see a question cropping up there. Right, okay, I'll try and uh, calm down. I'm hearing there's a message here saying I can hear some banging into the microphone. I'll uh, try and uh, stop my movements to see if I can prevent that. So the service charter and the service model with the outputs from service strategy, and just to reiterate what I mentioned there, the service model has the structure, the dynamics, which really covers how we're going to build these things, the various interactions with it, and it will be event management. And to reiterate my other point, it will be event management that will provide us with tangible proof that the service strategy is working. Service strategy, understanding why we're doing this, we then need to go into design, at which point we will understand how, or start to describe how we're going to achieve this. <clears throat> and within service design, we had the uh, four aspects of service, service design, people, process, products, and partners, all of which will uh, contribute towards event management. Importantly also, we had the five aspects of service design. Design of the service solution itself, covering functional requirements, resources and capabilities needed and agreed. So what are the functional requirements? We'll need event management for that. Design of the service management systems, especially the service portfolio and the service catalog, which in itself will be event driven because we need to make updates and uh, change the status of services throughout their life cycle. Design of the processes, which may include automation. We need to understand the triggers that kick off the process. Remember, a trigger can be event-based or time-based. So if you insure your car, that is uh, a time-based event. 
our process trigger that we do once a year. If you've ever had to claim on your car insurance, that is an event-based trigger. And when we consider the process of incident management, that indeed is an event-based trigger because the incidents are random. And we can use automated tools to detect messages coming out from our monitoring agent to initiate an incident and indeed automate some of the recovery actions within there. We need to consider design of the technology and the management architectures and more often than not within your own organizations you'll have seen tools, technology that monitors uh, network events would be a classic one within there as well as database events I suppose and application events. So those are four of the five aspects of service design. The fifth one and not the least of which is design of the measurement systems, the measurement methods. We need to ask, do the existing measurement methods provide what we need? Are the tools giving us what we need? What are our key performance indicators? What metrics do we need to gather? What measurements do we need to take? So we had the four P's of service design, we had the five aspects, and then we had the three reasons to produce a service design package. We designed for a new service, a major change to an existing service, and we also design for removal or retirement of a service. For the first two, certainly, we will need to consider uh, the event management and its implications therein. When we're doing the service design package, we say we do it for a major change in the existing service, rather than business as usual or emergency changes, because there is a lot of resource involved in doing this, a lot of time and effort. You will need to engage your functional areas, such as technical management, looking after our infrastructure, applications management, operations management, and indeed the service desk, as well as roles such as process owners, service owners, and the business relationship manager we spoke about in strategy to ensure what we're designing is fit for purpose, dare I say fit for use, in support of the strategic aims of the business. So as part of production of the SDP, you'll probably have a number of workshops producing the service design package, the blueprint, the template, to ensure we've taken a holistic approach to make sure what we're going to build and test and deploy into operation can ultimately report back to us and give us the information we need to ensure delivery of value to the customers or the business. So I've covered service strategy and service design at that stage. I'm just curious to have uh, any questions arisen in your minds? I'd like to invite anybody to uh, forward a question if you have any before I move on. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll deal with those on an individual basis. Later on, let's move on to the next section where we're looking at service transition. Now, service strategy, I said why we're doing something. Service design, we're getting into the how. Uh, a lot of transition is about building and testing. And in here, we will be building and testing, trying to ensure, <coughs> excuse me, that the events defined in the service design package are being rigorously tested before they're introduced into the operation. Making sure they provide those triggers and the information and don't instigate any uh, spurious activity as a result of bad design or lack of testing. Now with the, this in mind, I'm surprising how seldom you see a project plan or a request for change that highlights requirements for the testing of events and indeed their interfaces, such as automation. This is the last chance we have to get this right before the service becomes operational. This is where the risk filter fits in. And having understand the criticality of events in support of strategic aims, perhaps it should be given a little more attention than it sometimes receives. And in fact, I've said how we're testing events as part of transition. Event management 
can itself be used to support the transition, build and test activities themselves. As we're building, testing, we will be identifying events and feeding them back into, and this could be via knowledge management, uh, further improvements for transition. When we built and tested these things, what we're going to deploy into the live operation is the release package. <coughs> now, in service strategy, in service strategy we talk about value. What is the customer value? We speak about the components, the elements of value, warranty and utility. We speak about what do we use to create value, our resources and capabilities. We talk about the why in strategy. Design, we're going to use our resources and capabilities to produce uh, services that are of high levels of warranty and utility. Uh, and this is what we're thinking about, how we're going to create that value within design. We can test it in transition. To some extent, we need to consider all of this, but it is in operations where the value is actually experienced. This is where, as I mentioned earlier, this is the tangible proof, the evidence that our strategy is actually working. And this is going to show how well operational activities and interactions are related to the business strategy. Examples could be we're trying to even grow the business, perhaps uh, on a new web-based service. Without event management, uh, we need to understand, we can't really show, apologies, how many accesses we've had to a particular web page within here. It is event management that provides the capability to compare actual performance against design standards and service level agreements. And all too often, I think it's a forgotten process. It's left till, left till the last minute to be considered. And event management really provides us with, uh, how can I phrase it, the finger on the pulse of the infrastructure. It actually provides us with the finger on the pulse of the services. And this provides us with a key opportunity to be as proactive as possible. So although we're doing processes such as incident and problem and request, there are proactive aspects of problem management. What we're doing in operations should also drive the proactive aspects of availability management and uh, capacity management. <clears throat> also within here, service operation is really going to be the eyes and ears of CSI the next stage of the life cycle, continual service improvement, which is really wrapped around the other four stages itself. It's embedded within there. We talk about reasons to monitor and measure in CSI. And some of these are to validate, direct, justify, and intervene. How do people justify the cost of doing availability management? They need to look at the cost of unavailability. And it will be event management, from incident start and end times which are going to contribute towards that. People tend to think about uh, capacity management in terms of space and it is. We talk about resource utilization, network bandwidth, disk space, uh, people would be a resource as well, CPU and it is that but it also talks about performance so capacity management isn't just about resource utilization it's about performance, space and speed. And how often do we hear in operations users contacting the service desk saying it's running slow? This is a performance issue. This is capacity management. How do you know what slow means if we haven't got event management in operations to compare against? So it will be event management again using to compare against the baselines, providing that data that we're going to use. Event management is going to provide that data which will feed into knowledge management. So we've got the discrete sets of facts about events. Information, when we put this, uh, these events into some context, is what we start to work with. So we may have change 
outage started at a particular time, change ended. So let's say it started at 10.30, change ended at 10.40. Those are data, those are events we've captured, discrete sets of facts. The information we glean from this is the duration of the change. Knowledge is really about analysis of the information and experience. That will help us to understand uh, the average duration of certain types of changes. Feeding into wisdom, which are the four steps we talk about in knowledge management, data, information, knowledge, wisdom. Wisdom we gain from this knowledge is when's the best time to schedule certain types of changes. But if we've not captured this information from the operational level to feed into knowledge management, um, it can't really help us in transition when we're looking at scheduling changes. So it's the eyes and ears of CSI and knowledge management. We've covered transition so far and service operation. Um, anybody else got any questions to raise at this point? Again, I'll, uh, I'll respond to those questions on an individual basis uh, after this session is finished. Continual service improvements. <clears throat> I've already stated that uh, event management really the eyes and ears of continual service improvement. The efficiency, the effectiveness of continual service improvement phrase could, could be diluted or its, its um, overall performance hindered without the process of event management. Event management itself naturally leads towards improvements in efficiency, efficient, excuse me, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, particularly when you consider it in relation to automation. We like to automate wherever possible to remove uh, human errors uh, and also, as I say, to improve efficiency and effectiveness. In fact, when we speak about continual service improvement, we talk about um, metrics, types of metrics, technology metrics, working at the component level. We need to have defined these things way back in design, tested them, and monitored them in operations to get the mean time between failure for components. We talk about process metrics, which are the key performance indicators, and we need to understand areas such as quality, performance, compliance, and value. So quality, how effective is the process? Performance, how efficient? Compliance, are people abiding by it? And we may be asking the question as well, does it actually provide value? Without the metrics to support that, we're going to struggle. So we had technology metrics, process metrics, and last but by no means least, we had the service metrics, the end-to-end -end service metrics, underpinned by the component metrics. And this is where we have roles such as the service level manager, is interested in the end-to-end -end service metrics underpinned by event management. We have the service owner, he or she is accountable for the service and responsible for improving it. If we don't have the metrics, how well do we know the, the service is performing in order to improve it? Business relationship management, facing off to the customer would be another role that's very, very interested in the metrics, the end-to-end -end service metrics along with the customer. So it's event management support these metrics, and we also spoke of reasons to monitor and measure, to validate, direct, justify, intervene. How can we justify more resource if we can't provide the proof and evidence that we need it? This is what event management is going to give us. We need to set direction. It may be event management, given as the metrics this indicate how well or how badly we're performing in order to set direction. We use metrics to validate a previous decision. So we need to consider these. And the classic reason we monitor and measure is to intervene. We're seeing a trend, and it will be event management, perhaps even as part of uh, baselines and snapshots that will show us a trend, 
and it indicates we need to intervene now or at some subsequent point in time. So configuration, continual service improvement, apologies, using metrics to drive improvements right throughout the life cycle. These will be driven, uh, I'll pass through to service improvement plans held as part of the continual service improvement register. And if it's a major improvement, these may support the business case, which may be attached to a major change and may form part of um, the service portfolio. So we're seeing right from CSI, the events we thought about in strategy, driving through into operation, eyes and ears, driving CSI right across the life cycle. So this is pulling it all together, the big picture. Uh, it's, it's a very basic diagram, I suppose, illustrating where event management needs to interface with the various stages of the life cycle to ensure successful, efficient, and effective delivery and management of services. And you will note it commences with service strategy. And in particular, I think the role of the business relationship manager is key here. Producing a service charter with a service model, feeding through into design, so we've got the why, getting into the how, and then we need to consider events as part of the production of the service design package. Then we get into transition, which is the risk filter, and we can be using event management to support the build, test, and deployment activities. If I think about deployment, we had deployment options, big bang versus phased, pushed versus pulled, manual versus automated. And without event management, you will find it very, very difficult to automate a release deployment. If you make it centrally available and rely on people to pull it down themselves, well, then you're going to need some way of uh, detecting that a configuration item is being updated. So discovery tools, detection tools will be used even as part of um, a centrally pulled down rather than manually automated. So it can support the build and test activities as well as being tested. In operations, this is where the value is experienced, eyes and ears of CSI, feeding back into all the various stages of the life cycle, and I believe that service operation, the resource we have here, the custodians of technical expertise, for areas such as technical management application, should be engaged much, much earlier in the life cycle, as early as service design, in order to ensure that we're making, making the events available that we're going to run with in operation, and indeed these same resources should be involved in the transition, the build and test activities. Operation, I've mentioned this before again, this is where we provide the capabilities to compare actual performance against design standards and SLAs. Please don't consider event management fury from uh, an operational viewpoint. Everything I've described so far hopefully leads us towards some appreciation of just how crucial event management is to the successful management of services. How the resources and activities associated with the process should be engaged much earlier in the life cycle than is usually experienced. It can demonstrate the proficiency of a service provider in supporting the client's business. It's providing that proof and evidence that the strategy is working. Historically, it's focused on infrastructure components and applications. The emphasis should really be on the business itself. And I would suggest a top-down approach is taken to ensure that operational IT remains aligned to the tactical and indeed the strategic goals of the business. There is a sense that uh, event management is purely in a technical activity. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth, I believe. Stakeholders need to be involved at every stage of the life cycle. And any more questions at that stage?
Thank you for those. Once again, I've made a note of those. I will respond. So what next? Well, an organization may well be at a low level of maturity in relation to the event management process. Uh, you may be seeking where you could, can uh, obtain the greatest benefit from a, a reasonable amount of effort. Uh, FGI can help you, or you need to consider perhaps uh, what are your pain points. Examples might be you have uh, service level agreements with targets you're unable to measure, uh, improvement opportunities made via automation. Uh, perhaps you may be thinking I've got insufficient detail coming through for uh, incidents or problem analysis. Yeah. So perhaps, as I say, it started you thinking about a comprehensive approach to event management. Um, bear in mind the journey doesn't end here. Uh, it's highly unlikely that the environment, the services themselves, are going to remain static. Things change. The setting of uh, filters and correlation rules we talk about in event, made, in event management will need to be revised. And not only because of changing business requirements, they are rarely right first time. And even if there were, the processes, the procedures, the tools will need revisiting on an ongoing basis in order to maintain support for the evolving business processes and practices. There's an email address if you'd like to contact me. There will be a short summary uh, popping up for your thoughts on this, and all of the attendees will receive a white paper. Can I please just take the opportunity to thank you all again for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to uh, listen to this brief session on event management. Thank you very much indeed.